teased earlier about changing the subject. Yeah. And, uh, to, and what a difference it makes to, yeah. to just the, yeah. the vision that the Lord gave you of a thousand churches. Right. Change the subject. Yeah. And all yeah. of these, in a sense, all of these other developments yeah. are yeah. part of that. Yeah. It was, it, again, and, and the Lord really did, as I prayed toward my inaugural sermon as Archbishop, um, and, and asked, what are the things that I need to set before the church? I mean, this is a, for, for most of 40 years, Anglicans have been fighting one, one another and splitting over prayer book and splitting over women's ordination and splitting over this and that and the other thing. Um, what, um, what would it be, um, Lord, that, that would help us to change the subject? I mean, and, and I, again, he gave me the, 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 the number a thousand churches. Now, well, that's pretty interesting. That could only come from you, Lord, or else from you know my vain imagining. Uh, and uh, when I when I preached the sermon, I I had ten things I was calling the church to, engaging with Islam, um, developing the kind of discipleship for our people that that's needed, um, being a, a being a body. Um, that, that prays every day, I mean, all those. But a thousand churches, the people started to applaud and rose to their feet. And I realized, yep, that must have been from the Lord, because <laughs> whoever heard of First Episcopalians or Anglicans applauding during a sermon and, <laughs> you know, and then getting to their feet about church planting, I mean, the Lord must have been in this. And it, it was a big enough vision that the whole church is, that's what we're engaged in. We're not, you know, we've lost a lot, been a lot of hurt, a lot of broken relationships because of the stand. Um, uh, folks have lost lots of resource. Many of our clergy are now working by vocationally in order to do, do the thing. I mean, this is a lot of hardship, but you rarely hear people complaining about how much they've suffered or how much they've lost. What they're talking about is planning the next church. And, you know, God is good. I mean, he, he's even able to get through to me. So, I mean, you know, what a, what a good deal that is. But, yeah, but it's really, it, it really has changed things. And even the polity, that's the interesting thing. It's, it's not just yeah. a lovely thing to applaud, yeah. but it's actually yeah. having very practical. Right. Uh, well, we, we've also had to, um, the, this again, Anglicanism is hierarchical in that there are bishops who are overseers who have authority in regions of the church. Um, but this movement really is a movement rather than something that's directed from above. And everybody's call, every church is to plant other churches. And once you begin to do that, you, you give the church freedom to to, okay, well, how would we do it? And who would we reach? And they don't have to consult somebody else to, to get, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's been a pretty exciting shift. Um, and it's affecting a lot of others. And kind of interesting that Asbury Seminary is talking about <laughs> church planting and uh, talking with Anglicans of all people. I mean, I thought the thunder and lightning might be because the archbishop came to, you know, chapel. But <laughs> let me ask you this question, okay? You've opened that door. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. You know, our favorite um, Wesleyan Anglican, of course, is John Wesley. Yes. Right. Right. What is the presence of, place of, spirit of Wesleyan Arminianism in the Anglican communion? The scriptures, while they do give the Calvinists some opportunity to think about double election, that the Lord has elected both those to be saved and those to be damned. Um, uh, if you're gonna take the, the whole of scripture to understand the meaning, um, it would certainly be the case that the Lord would know um, who has chosen not um, to follow him and might um, suffer the, the consequences of eternal separation and, and hell. Um, uh, nonetheless, uh, what the, the pastorals say over and over is that, that 
the Lord's will was that all should be saved. Um, the, in our tradition, the epistle for Christmas Day um, is that he willed that all uh, men should be saved. Not that all are, right. but that nonetheless he wanted. So we present the gospel uh, to all people. We're not, again, the, the letter of James makes it plain that we're not the judge. Um, he is. Uh, there's one judge. Uh, he is not you. Um, we, we present the gospel and, uh, um, a and hope um, for uh, a decision for him. The dark side and the um, glorious side of our history is that we're a state church or we're a state church so everybody belonged and you had to make room for everybody and so right. you know there was room for reform folk, there was room for, for um, holiness folk, there was room for Catholic folk yeah. um, and sometimes that room got us into trouble um, but it also is this impulse that everybody somehow belongs and you have to you try to make room for everybody within the boundaries right and i think that missional thrust is probably the only way to keep it together you get people together and try to get them to compromise or come to some kind of an agreement yeah and before long it's it can get out of hand sure but when we're all yeah. pointed yeah. in the same yeah. direction yeah well, again, what, to pull everyone together. Right. what I used to say as Bishop of Pittsburgh, I mean, we, we had a history of a lot of warfare within, within the diocese. And I, I used to say to folks, you know, when folks have a vision, they aim at the vision. When they have no vision, they aim at each other. Some would say what we did in bringing the Anglican Church in North America together was a compromise. We have many who believe that the ordination of women was the right direction for the church and many who believe it was the wrong direction for the church and for between 30 and 40 years we split into more and more fragments over that issue and the Episcopal Church of course became almost totalitarian about the enforcement of, of, of a, new, a new order. Um, but what we did was we, we believed the Lord was calling us to make peace on that issue, not as a first order issue, um, but as something that was very important but could be disagreed about within the church, as it is disagreed about within the universal church. Um, and if we focused on what God was calling us to do, that is to be a biblical, and again, the question of ordination of women in scripture is is not black and white it's technicolor mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's it it, it I mean, there it is uh, in the tradition it's clearer um, uh, but um, we we agreed that we could respect each other on that issue um, and we could reach North America for the sake of the mission for the sake of the mission and God's really blessed what we've done. I, I have to believe three years into this that, you know, that, that the Lord is, is pleased with what we've offered him because we've had, and we've had such uh, favor mm -hmm. and such blessing. You know, sometimes we don't have a perspective on what the global Anglican world really is. Here in the United States, it's not a huge numerically, but I was reminding our kids the other day that, you know, this is the the third largest stream of the church and soon to be the second largest. And we have the Romans and then the Eastern Church and then the Anglicans and the, the demographics are changing such that soon oh, yeah. the Anglican. So we're yeah. part of something that's, uh, that's quite remarkable, quite remarkable and, yeah. and global. And um, my own experience, um, I became an Anglican in Kenya, as you know. I had been teaching yeah. there for a number of years. and. I was ordained in the Anglican Church of Kenya. So when we returned to the United States, in order for me to celebrate communion in my hometown, my Kenyan bishop had to give permission, had to sort of give me to a Ugandan bishop who was overseeing <laughs> our, <laughs> our uh, fledgling yeah, right. group yeah. here in Versailles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something so beautiful in that yeah, for, for yeah. me. And I know that story's been yeah. told a, a yeah, thousand sure. times that yeah. we are 
truly united across uh, yeah. cultures and yeah. and now to hear that uh, that some of our bishops are there meeting with them in Kenya, yeah. Yeah. It's just thrilling. Oh, it's very it's it's a it's it's quite a remarkable, a remarkable thing. Yeah, uh, yeah the church is is not only trans uh, uh, temporal uh, and transnational, but it's transcultural and it's quite quite extraordinary. Again, all of that is a kind of a preview of what it'll look like um, in the city of God. You know.